Okay, welcome to 80s Punk Rock, the uh, live Zoom, thing, uh, Zoom interviews, whatever the hell you call them. Uh, 80s Punk Rock page, and along with me are my co ends uh, Mike S. and uh, Kenny. Uh, and today we're interviewing uh, Mike Gallo from Agnostic Front. Uh, welcome to the show, Mike. Uh, this Thanks is our first one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you giving us an opportunity to actually uh, do our first one of these things so hopefully we won't fuck it up too bad so um well, <laughs> so, i'll pop uh, you i'll pop uh, your cherry tonight all right cool right on all right so uh to, to start this thing uh uh so uh, basically tell us uh, how long you've been with uh, the band and uh, uh that type of stuff your uh, history a little bit uh 2021 will be 20 years I'm with Agnostic Front, which is um, pretty fucking amazing. <laughs> it's a, or an unbelievable. It's, I, I still, to this day, can't actually believe that um, I'm an Agnostic Front. Yeah, it's wild. It's, it's been a fucking adventure, to say the least. I could imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's it was, <laughs> It still is. I mean, well, now nothing's going on, but you know, it, it's been a hell of a ride. I gotta say. Right on. Is it like? Uh, was it like just totally like uh, uh, you like were couldn't even believe when you first got in and and that you were even you know with these guys who are pretty much you know the legends of hardcore. You know, I mean, they're like. Yeah, I mean, you know, when um, the first two years were the best. I mean, because, you know, it was obviously exciting and fresh and new. And uh, at first, I almost didn't even make the band. Uh, when I, um, I mean, because when I, I went from playing maybe like one show a month to playing, you know, 30 shows a month, you know, so... Uh, I was I was not professional at all, you know. I I hardly even knew how to play the bass. To be completely honest with you, uh, I just um, they had I, I, we had a tryout for a dude who completely blew me away. And uh, he's got a background music going. Sorry. Yeah, I hear something music he's going. He's got on. background music going or something. Not me. I don't know. This is weird. So, hackers. I think it's <laughs> off. Oh, is it you? All right, whatever. Okay, cool. Well, all right, so uh, I, go ahead. Yeah, um, so I'm going to say uh, it. Yes, you are. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, when I first joined the band, I mean, we did, there was a tryout with another dude. And, um, you know, I remember just the other guy being so much better. And then, the drummer at the time, Jimmy Coletti. Oh my God, I gotta call him actually. Uh, he said, like, "Hey, come take a take a ride. Let's go get some beer." You know, and I was like, "All right, here comes the letdown." You know what I mean? Uh, I thought I was gonna hear, um, you know, you're a nice guy, you know, blah blah blah. But and then he was like, "Nah, you're in." You know, and I'm like, "What do you mean I'm in?" I was like, "That guy is way better than me." He's like, "Yeah, you're horrible." He's like, "You know." Uh, <laughs> He's like, it's punk rock. You'll learn. You know, don't worry about it. He's like, you're one of us. So, uh, you know, I, you know, and, and then come the first tour, I just had a really hard time. Thank God Roger showed me some stuff and uh, I was able to pick up on it after, uh, um, after a couple of days at the tour, I had to really like sit down and just really learn everything correctly because I was not playing everything right. It was, it sounded horrible. You know, it wasn't sounding good. These guys are, Agnostic front, you know, like and they were like, you know, um, we gotta get together or we gotta get somebody else. So and, and I, I did all right. I pulled through, you know what I mean? I mean, I put my everything into it. I'm like, this is an opportunity I can't uh, pass up, you know. So I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna try to give it my all and uh here I am twenty something years later, you know. So um it's right you know, it's been right fun. Right. All right, guys. Are... I think everybody's cutting out, all right? Yeah, yeah. Am I right now? There you are. Yep. 
Well, that pretty much answered the question I was going to ask, which is uh, how were you approached to join the band? But you already, you already uh, covered that one. Well, yeah, actually, um, the old bass player, Rob Kabula, I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. Uh, he's like pretty much, that's not one of the originals, but he, uh, I believe he recorded on Victim in Pain and was for Alarm. Uh, I think even Liberty and Justice, too. I mean, he was a bass player. Um, and uh, he came back when they rejoined in the, uh, the late 90s. And uh, he had a great job. He was tired of touring. And he's like, came up to me one day, was like, hey, you want to join the band? And I was like, wow, yeah, really? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know? I was like, you fucking kidding me? Yeah, so um, he basically asked me to join. And then, you know, I would always see those guys. And they were like, hey, come down. And, um, let's do a tryout because Rob's leaving. And uh, yes, yeah, so he kind of gave it the blessing to me, basically, you know, which was pretty much a huge honor. And, uh, you know, Rob's a great guy and great bass player. And, you know, I mean, I look up to these guys, you know, and it's like, it was pretty wild to actually fucking be in a band that, like, you used to go see and just, like, idolize. You know, it's wild. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was definitely fucking really cool. You know, like I said, I still to this day can't believe that I'm actually in the band. It's wild. It's really that just... Would, uh, that would definitely blow my mind. Yeah. Well, it, it completely blew my mind out because now I'm shot. <laughs> I guess that brings me to my question, which was also answered. <laughs> if you were a fan before joining the band. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean... I mean, Agnostic Front, I mean, if you grew up in New York hardcore, which I did, you know, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a very special part of my life, you know, like I really uh, feel like I found myself as, as a person and I feel like, you know, a lot of the music and a lot of the message that they spoke to you really helped me become, um, you know, the man I am today, you know what I mean? Just because it's different from like listening to... Um, a pop band or whatever band, you know, the, the music is more personal, you know, you know, there's, there's, you know, good, strong lyrics, like about being yourself and, you know, just, it just, I don't know, it helped, it helped me, um, it helped me become the man I am today, you know, I mean, just, you know, lyrically, it's, it's just, um, it's smart, you know what I mean? It's just, um, it's different. It's, it's different than any other type of music you listen to. You know, it's just, um, it's, it's a special thing, especially New York hardcore. There was nothing like it, especially, I mean, there's still nothing like it. I mean, there's bands all over the world that mimic us, you know, it's just, um, it's a really, it's, it's definitely a special breed. Yeah, I, I like agree. to say punk, I like to say punk rock is the thinking man's music. <laughs> it is. Although it's more simple to play, um, <laughs> which, um, but which is, but, but you know, I mean, not all of it is, but it's just, uh, but what's so great? It's more genuine. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, uh, it, it's, it, you know, the, the music is from the heart. You know what I mean? Like, you know, most, you know, it's not like this poppy crap love song garbage. You know what I mean? Uh, it's that's sincere. Why it is sincere. It really is, you know? Um, not all of it is, but you know, oh, yeah. you know, you know, the real ones are, you know, so, but it is, it absolutely is, you know, some people, um, like a lot of my friends never got it, you know what I mean? They would, they would call it like Mike Gallo music <clears throat> because like they were all like fucking Guidos listening to hip hop and all that. And I was at one point too. I won't deny that, but, uh, you know, like I just, I grew out of that, you know what I mean? I, when I, especially when I found hardcore, like, forget it. I was, I was it. I mean, I hardly saw my friends after that. I was at shows all the time. That was it, you know? It took over my life. Like, um, I just never felt so part of something, you know what I mean? I was just like, it was, just, it was a special thing for me, you know? I really, uh, I mean, I wouldn't be where I am today if, if uh, I wouldn't be the man I am today if it was New York hardcore. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people I know, uh, when I got into it years ago, a lot of people, they didn't get it either. I tried to explain it to them, but mm -mm. I'm just like, if you don't, if you don't, if I, 
if you don't get it, you don't get it. I don't know. I just, I don't really know of, of any better yeah. way to explain it, you know? Well, you know, I mean, it's in, in, in reality, it's not for everybody. You know what I mean? It's an underground thing. It always is. You know what I mean? It, it always will be. And, uh, you know, and, and I guess we like it that way because we really, you know, it, it would suck if every dude you saw in the mall wearing a, um, a Cro-Mag shirt. You know what I mean? Like, it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, you know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, it's supposed to be raw. It's it's, it's meant to be that way, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, the funny thing is that this comparison I always made that really, and, and, and if you think about it this way, uh, I think like hardcore and punk rock is so much more catchier than metal. But yet, but yet metal is bigger. You know what I mean? Like to me, I I would hear like, I mean, you do now you hear a moon songs on the radio, like, but like, you know, like, you know, all the sing alongs, like even like a gotta go or, um, you know, um, stick of it all's got, um, what's the, what's the hit they got sick of it all. Um, in the underground, you know, that lies within, you know, it's so catchy, you know. You know, I, 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 I feel like I would hear that on the radio, the radio before you would hear, like, growling heavy metal. But like, heavy metal is like a huge thing, you know. It's funny, you know. That's I never. That's something I never really understood, but you know, it is what it is. All right, Mike. So. Uh... Any uh, preferred basses you like to play, and do you play any other instruments? Uh, I I really always prefer the Fender P bass. That's that's my axe. Um, I'm endorsed by ESP, and they make stuff that's pretty much very similar to that. And even some of the one of, some of the basses I have, I have a um, I believe it was called the, the Vintage series that they don't make anymore. Which sucks because I love that bass. And I want to know like we don't make it anymore. Uh, it's a beautiful bass. It may even be a better bass than the P bass. It's it's a beautiful bass, you know. It's a little heavy, but uh, it just sounds ferocious. It's beautiful, you know. And I use I use a Sansan pedal, which really helps work my sound, you know. Like uh, when my Sansan pedal breaks on tour, I'm fucked, you know. That's why I always gotta have a backup. I can't play without one. It's just, uh, it's, uh, it just really, you know, defines my tone. I have a hard time playing without hearing it behind me, you know, it's just, um, just so used to it. I really, so it's like the P bass, uh, the Santan pedal, uh, and when I rent equipment, you, I mean, I'll either, um, usually use a classic SVT classic. Use that. Um, that's what I normally use at home. I have a, a GK seven hundred RB. We don't tour as much in the states. You know what I mean? You got to carry shit around. Try to keep it smaller. You know, like when we rent stuff in Europe, it's different. So I'll, I'll order like top of the line shit. But when I'm home, I use a GK seven hundred RB, which is great. You can tweak anything with the Sans amp. You know, it's that's it. You know, that's the tone. I love you know, it. You know, it is amazing. Like at the beginning of the before the beginning of the show when me and you were chatting like i said you know the comparison between the eliminator back then as opposed to the instruments you guys are using now and just the sound quality and everything and i didn't think that song could be topped but the eliminator 2020 just shreds man it's incredible thank you thank you man it's, it's pretty awesome yeah i mean you know We've all evolved as musicians and even just like, you know, sound wise. And the, I mean, back then, you know, they, they weren't, you know what I mean? Like uh, technology's come a long way. So sound wise, you can get stuff to just sound fucking incredible these days. You know, any studio that someone knows their fucking shit, you know, you know, the sound, you know, and we, we, we play, I mean, Christ, we probably play 265 shows a year, you know what I mean? And we play Eliminate every night. So, like, I mean, you know, like, if we ain't got it down by now, we should fucking pack it up, you know? <laughs> so I'm glad that we were able to um, execute it. It's hard to capture that, though. That really, you know what I mean? Especially that song was a fucking animal. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's, uh, 
you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to touch that. You know, that's why sometimes a lot of times they want to like they're thinking about re-recording, uh, like Victim in Pain. That's that's a tough one because you know what? That like, I mean, it sounded like shit, but the fucking the feeling of that record is just is insane. You know what I mean? It's just it sounds it, awesome. That record is awesome. It's 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 incredible. I mean, it's. It's it's a, it's a it's a great record. I mean, it's one of the best New York hardcore records ever. I don't care what anybody says, you know. I think it's the best one. Uh, it's just I don't know. There's something about it. even playing those songs live. It's just it's just it's fucking awesome. I love it. You know, it's hard. It's hard. But you know, I don't I don't know if, what would happen if we tried to re-record that. I'd be scared to. I mean, I don't know. You know, I'm sure it'll sound great, but you know, it'll be different. So That's what, so um. What got you into music when you were younger? I, you know, I come from a family of musicians. Uh, my whole family, my, my dad was, my dad's a musician. My mother played a piano. There was a piano in my house. Like, so like, I just grew up with music. My mother loved music. Uh, I, I just grew up with it. I was surrounded by it all the time. And then my cousin, my cousin Steve was a couple of years older than me. You know, I always looked up to him and stuff, and he was he was a couple of years older than me, and he got me into like Kiss and Sabbath. You know, that was like the beginnings of me getting into like rock and roll and you know and metal and like Judas Priest and stuff like that. You know, so like that's what I kind of grew up with, and then there was like Iron Maiden and then Metallica. You know, Kate was coming out around that time, and it was just like at that time, music was fucking thriving. It was just, you know, the early 80s was just, forget it, it was nuts. And I was a little boy. I was, very, I was a very young kid. I was, like, probably into music at, like, seven, eight, nine years old listening to this stuff, you know? And uh, <clears throat> it's funny because, and I've always listened to music, and I was always into music. But as I got older, growing up where I grew up, uh, nobody would listen to, nobody would listen to the music with me. You know, they were just like kind of weren't having it, you know, and I was, you know, I was forcing Metallica and Maiden, like all this shit. And these guys like really weren't feeling it, you know what I mean? So I was just like, I had nobody to listen to the music with. So I kind of like, I kind of fell off. I stopped listening to it for a couple of years and, until I got into um, around 10th grade. And then, um, I was in, my school was a vocational school. So we had kids from other schools coming over and I was meeting different people. And introduced me into music and I'm like oh man this is great you know like I miss listening to this stuff you know and then I really kind of started getting into more like more underground stuff um good stuff like stuff like uh like even like before I started listening to punk and hardcore it was like fishbone you know and, and bands like that uh that that was like sparking my interest and then um, a buddy of mine from Staten Island moved here. He's like, oh, you're into good music. He's like, you let me listen to our chord. I was like, no, not really. And then he played me some stuff, brought me to a Murphy's Little Show, and that was the rest of my life. It was over. <laughs> you know, that's, that's that's basically the um, the lowdown on how um, I got basically into all this and how, you know, how music has definitely been, you know, a really big part of my life. Yeah, man, it'll change your life. Oh, changed mine forever. Sorry, I had, some of your favorite? I had connection issues. Sorry about that. Go ahead, guys. Okay. Oh, no problem. Right. I was going to ask, what are some of your favorite bands? Like, I know you mentioned some early thrash. Like, if, if we looked in your record collection, would, would we find something like Tony Bennett or anything like that? Yeah, probably find more <laughs> Tony Bennett than anything else. <laughs> I mean, not, not Tony Bennett, but... Uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly, I listen to everything. You know what I mean? I really do. I love all kinds of music. Uh, uh, I just, it, it's, you know, I mean, I listen to, I, I mean, I listen to everything from oi to hip hop. Um, not really much jazz, but uh, I'm pretty open-minded. You know, reggae, hip hop, hardcore, punk rock, metal. Rock and roll is basically what I listen to. And I don't really listen to, I don't really listen to too much jazz. I really don't listen to too much uh, country. 
but uh, I'm I'm pretty open minded. I just love a good song. You know what I mean? Like I've always, you know, to me, um, a lot of people would make fun of bands and stuff. You know, I was like, I was never really that guy. You know what I mean? Like I, I I'm just a music lover. If you can write a good song, I appreciate that. You know, there's there's tons of musicians out there uh, <coughs> who um they could certainly play a fucking their instrument better than me, but can you write a song? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, you know, I love a good song. I really do. You know, I just, you know, I mean, everything from like the cars to uh, Black Sabbath to 50 Cent to, uh, you know. Uh, do you get into any grindcore? Not really. You know, not, I like thrash metal. You know what I mean? I love all the old thrash stuff. Uh, but I'm not really into the grind metal. No, I'm, re I'm really not. You know, the death metal. I like Napalm Death. You know, they were fucking great. They just always had a good groove. I, I like them. Uh, but I'm not really too big on metal these days. That's one thing I don't listen to as much as I used to. When I was a kid, I loved it, you know? But I kind of recently been going back to it. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've been digging into the thrash stuff again, you know? Yeah. So... Uh, I go, I got, I go through phases, you know. But, but I love everything. I'm just a music lover. I, re, you know, I love it. Right on. <clears throat> so, next question. And obviously, you have some outside interests. So, when you're not going around with the band and everything, what do you do in your spare time? Hobbies. Obviously, you got some stuff going on behind you there. So, uh, tell us a little bit about. Yeah. Um. You know. I've. I've. Even as a child, I was, I was always big into art and graffiti growing up. You know, I, I've always had a, had a love for it. Um, it's just, um, I mean, as a kid, always doing all sorts of art and stuff. And then when I found graffiti, it was, uh, I kind of brought it to another level. Because it was just, uh, um, it brought a little danger to the art game. You know, like excitement. You know, next thing you know, I was stealing paint and... Uh, you know, hitting the parkways and uh, getting chased, and it was a lot of fun. You know, uh, so that's what I, I've always tried to incorporate into my art. But so, like, I went to school to um, become an advertising artist, and I just wasn't a school guy. You know, I just I dropped out. I was like, this shit sucks. And uh, then I got into uh, so I was like, I kind of like. I kind of stopped with the art for a little bit, you know, until I got married and, you know, be kind of came domestic, you know, family man, <laughs> you know, I needed like a little something on the side to, um, you know, not going out every night and living in the city, you know? So I needed a little something to, you know, do on my downtime. And I got really back into doing art again. And I just got a newfound love for it and really just, uh, started taking it serious. I started making, few pieces for my friends and then people like hey do you sell it and I was like yeah maybe I'll start selling it you know and then the next thing you know just posting it and I made a couple of pieces people really dug and uh I was doing like custom I was doing like custom vinyl records which was a thing that really helped me get off the ground which is pretty cool I would do like New York hardcore symbols and I did a CBGB's which was really cool that one's a really good seller. I still sell it like I, on on my on my site. I have where I, where I can tag your four favorite bands on the CBGBs. This way, it's kind of custom to you, and um, each piece is unique, you know, and it's it's personal thing. So that's a, that's a big seller for me, you know. People really dig that. I have. Uh, I also do. Um, I do canvases like New York hardcore canvas flags where um, you give me your 12 favorite records and then, you know, I, I put the record cover on there and I, and then I paint the flag over it. That's a real cool, awesome one. That's another big one I sold tons of. So um, I try to keep it personal. I try to be personal with my customers and, um, you know, my style is basically everything from, from just like, you know, I like to recreate portraits and, uh, you know, I like to do a lot of graffiti style art and I like a little pop art too. So I kind of try to mingle that all together and um, oh, it seems to be working for me. Um, it's really been amazing. Uh, it's been a lot of fun just uh, 
be, being able to uh, make a living off of creating art and music. So it's basically, it's my life, you know, it's, um, it, it's definitely been an amazing journey. And so now this is what I'm working on full time now because we can't do much with the band. So I'm just doing 100% art right now. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, how has COVID affected the band? I mean, have you guys had to cancel all, like, a lot of your stuff that you're doing? Everything. Probably till next September. Man, As yeah. Right now, you know, I mean, closing everything down again, shutting everything down, restaurants, everything's closed and everything's gone. Everything's shut down again. That's Numbers how it is. are rising. You know, just say hospitals are filling up and here we go, round two. Yeah, who's, let's see who fucking survives. Yeah, did you ever wow. think you'd be living in a pandemic? Nah, definitely not. But, you know, I mean, they say this happens like every hundred years or so, you know? So uh, I think the last time was the Spanish flu. That lasted like two years. I believe that's what it was. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're one year down. Hopefully, you know, it doesn't last another, more than another year or so. I mean... It's pretty fucked up. It's fucking, I mean, it's destroying our lives. It's destroying everything, you know, businesses. And you're either losing your job, your health, or your life. That's basically what's happening. <laughs> That's yeah, it's crazy. Out of mind, you know, it's fucked up, you know. Uh, so many people dying. And it's just a lot of friends, not even just from COVID, just, you know, a lot of death. It's, it's a fucking... It's a pretty dark time. It really is. It's pretty fucked up. It's um, just everything that's going on from politically to, to fucking COVID. It's just the whole nation's divided. It's fucking crazy. It's, it's, it's really, it's really horrible. I hate to be a downer, but I don't want to get too into it, but it's just, you know, yeah, it's tough. I agree. You know, I just, I, I just, the only thing I could say <laughs> is, you know, a lot of times from bad comes good. You know what I mean? So maybe we have to go through the struggle and um, just build ourselves back up again from it, you know, and we're capable of doing it, you know. So unfortunately, a lot of people are going to die in the process. It's a fucking shame. Yeah. And, uh, that's all you can say. You know what I mean? Hopefully fucking things will come back stronger. You know what I mean? Maybe uh, once this is kind of um, hopefully, you know, fades away and uh, I, I don't know. Hopefully it does. Who knows? But you know, maybe, um, you know, people will be hungry to get back out there and get back into living <laughs> in life again. You know what I mean? So maybe it'll, maybe people will be a little more, um, I don't know, you know, realize what they got, you know, and, and, uh, they'll be ready know, to get out of the house. Oh man, I'm fucking ready to go now. I'll fucking go anywhere. <laughs> I'll get me the fuck out of here. Yeah. I got camera fever bad. Uh, I had, we, we, the last tour we did was the end of February. Uh, that was the last tour. It was amazing. Great tour. Persistence tour in Europe. And, uh, the year started off like with a bang. It was incredible. Great year. And then we just came home and I think about a month or so later, the pandemic happened. So, you know, just, um, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do now is, um, going to try and take advantage of this time being home. Uh, the band's going to start gonna, we're thinking about writing a couple of new songs. We may re-release or, you know, maybe uh, re-release um, a new record or some new material or something. We're just working on, if we figure why we'll, we'll do something while we're here, you know, we can't tour. Maybe we'll just write some music. I'm just going to keep trying to creating as much art as possible and just trying to create as much different stuff as, as I, that I can possible, you know, and uh, I'll try to bring myself to another level and just try to create stuff that people haven't created yet. That's, that's my goal. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have any funny road stories from being in the band? Ah, <laughs> funny road stories, shit. Oh man, you know, it's being like chased, <laughs> being chased by Japanese people and swarming your tour bus. And uh, fuck, every time I every time I put it on the spot and I ask this question, I, I I always choke. I really do. 
I swear I always do. And then like, <laughs> and then I get off the phone with them and they'll be like, oh man, I should have told that one. I should have told that one. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> Road stories, man. Well, I, need, I, need stigma. Gotta be something. <laughs> I need stigma for this one. There's so many too, because especially with Vinny, he's like a fucking living cartoon. I'm, I'm just trying to think of, oh, I mean, there's been so many horror stories. Uh, I can remember those, but I'm just trying to think of funny. T- oh man, I, I I can't. I don't. Know, let me. Let's keep talking. Maybe um, maybe want to pop into my head. I'm just. I'm <laughs> so right. like. I always get so stumped when somebody asks me that question, and I get choked up. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. Why. I've been running around for 20 years. Like my life's been insane, and I can't think of one story. I just. I don't know. I'll think of. <laughs> My friends, it's the same way. I do the same thing with them. They go on tour. Like, oh, so what happened on tour? Anything in stories? Like, I don't know. I don't remember. Like, what do you mean you don't remember? Like, you're the worst. You go on tour. You come back with no stories. I'm like, I don't know. I was like, you got a yank stigma for that one. He's that guy. I don't know. All right. Well, while you're pondering that and think about that, uh, speaking, going back to your work and everything, uh, any cheap plugs uh, you want to give the website where people can yeah. uh, purchase your art and uh, t-shirts, yeah. sweatshirts, whatever you got going? Yeah, I mean, I have I have a really fun website. I just redid it. Uh, I have everything from uh, sneakers, clocks, hoodies, t-shirts, pillows, phone cases, tote bags, uh, cell phone cases, laptop cases, uh, all sorts of fun stuff, you know? Um, so you can, I mean, you can find me, the easiest way to find me is on Instagram. It's Mike Gallo, 1975, which is pretty easy. And also Gallo Originals. I have two pages. Uh, one's more personal, one's more of the art side. Um, but, uh, and, and this, this links right in my bio. Like if you go to my page, you can click on the link. It'll take you right to my web store. It's pretty simple. You know, it's pretty easy to navigate. And uh, even my, I even have my paintings up there that I still haven't sold. that are still up there. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty fun site. You know, there's been a bunch of stuff. If you like my artwork, uh, yeah, check it out. You know, it's definitely uh, it's been it's it's hard. You know, it's hard. You know, because we can't make any money on the road. So every guy in the band has, is doing T-shirts now. So it's it's it's, it's a it's a hustle. You know, it's getting harder and harder. So. You have to really dig deep to um, put out some cool designs, you know. So that's what that's what I plan on doing this this winter. Really trying to um, push the t-shirt stuff. It's gonna be hard for me to paint here in the winter time. It'll be too cold, so I have to take it to the digital level. But um, you know, I'm I'm on Facebook. You can look me up. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, you can see I got links on everything on there. So uh, they we make it pretty easy these days, you know. Right on. Yeah, I've, I've been on the website a couple times. I'm very impressed with uh, some of the artwork. I really like the uh, the old painting that I've seen the picture before of Roger and Vinny, but saw yeah. your art version of it, and that's pretty incredible. Thank you, man. Yeah, that that one that was a fun one. You know, I I, I asked. Rod Orchard was the, the original photographer who took that picture. And I had to ask him if I can use the image, you know? Uh, he was all about it, you know? It's pretty cool. And I think it helped, you know, even bring a little attention to him. And, you know, I, I guess, I mean, you, you're stupid. Like, in fact, I had, um, I won't say what band it was or whatever, but I was supposed to do a, a cover for. And um, the photographer, oh, it, didn't like the fact that I, like, they gave me this photo. They said, this is the one they wanted to use. They wanted me to recreate that photo. And um, that's what I did. That's what they paid me to do. And then uh, the photographer had a problem with the fact that we did that. And I was just like, okay. I'm like, first of all, who the fuck are you? Like, you're going to get more attention now. You know what I mean? We'll tag you on it. We're not going to not give you the credit. We're going to be like, hey, dude. This is, this is the original photo, which is a beautiful photo. And um, it would have brought more attention to, to him. And, and, you know, like so it's like your fault. You're like, bite, you know, spite your own face. This is like, all right, douchebag. You know what I mean? Like, 
you know, I mean, it, but I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess maybe, I guess maybe, I don't know, maybe when they didn't ask him to, 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 to you know, like, you're supposed to ask the photographer. I was under the impression that they did. They gave me the picture to, to do for the cover, you know? So I guess they never asked him and maybe that pissed him off. Maybe, I don't know. I understand that, but um, that wasn't my fault, you know? They paid me to do the job and I did it. And, and a lot of people loved it. The guys in the band loved it too. But um, I guess, you know, there was an issue with it, so that was, they didn't use it. But, uh, you know, it's cool. I love doing, you know, I love doing all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I just did a really fun one. I did a Prince one. Did a few commissions for Christmas. So just trying to keep busy, you know, that's it, you know. And uh, then that, have you seen the Murphy's Law beer can that I did? I haven't, no. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen it? No. Oh, um, actually, I have one. I have one that kind of got fucked up, but um, you can see it. That's awesome. This is a cardboard cutout. Murphy's Law <laughs> killer killer beer can. <laughs> So I've been doing stuff like this, and this is all. I don't. I'm sure you guys are up on this guy. You guys are old school guys. You guys, you remember this guy? Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember him. Snidely, that Hannibal Bear. That's what Muttley. Was his name Snidely. Muttley. Yeah. <laughs> Muttley and Dick Dastardly. So I've been doing fun things like that, and I'm going to do an agnostic front one next. That's what I'm working awesome. on right now. So I'm just trying to do some fun, fun stuff like this, as opposed to just doing canvas and stuff like that. And so it's actually cheaper than canvas too. I do it on MDF board, so that's a lot of fun. Absolutely. So uh, I know they're all probably. Probably kind of like your babies, but uh, what's your favorite Agnostic Front song to, to play? Uh, I, I mean, uh, I'm going to say besides the ones that, you know, that, that I was involved in, you know what I mean? Because that's not really fair. Uh, I mean, I really, I, I love, um, I love like the victim of pain stuff. You know, it's just, um, it's just, it just has that energy that's just so raw and just so much fun. You know, I love songs like United and Strong. I mean, I got that on my neck. It's like one of my favorites. Uh, I mean, I've played Victim of Pain so many times, but um, um, Society Sucker is another one I like, you know, United Blood. It's another one for United Blood EP. Those are my favorites. I love, I also like the thrashy stuff, you know, like Toxic Shock. Public assistance, I love I love those two. Those those are a lot of fun, you know. And then like I guess like the newest stuff, um, man. We just did a new record. We haven't played a new one live really. <laughs> um, the new I mean I like old New York. That's uh, that's like one of my new favorite ones that that we play. But yeah, those, those are my favorites, you know. Right on. All right. Well, we're not going to hold you up too much more tonight, but we appreciate you coming on here, uh, giving us a chance, uh, breaking our cherry, so to speak, on the yeah. first live Zoom. Uh, I guess Kenny lost connection because he just dropped out all of a sudden out of the blue. All right. That's okay. Uh, okay. But uh, thank you so much, Mike, for coming on here and uh, yeah, man. Uh, doing this with us. It was great talking to you and uh, very interesting. And uh, uh, Plug your website one more time before we let you go so people can find out where to order your stuff. Um, Gal Gallo underscore originals dot com. And um, check out my Instagram, Mike Gallo 1975 and Gallo Originals. So you can find me on there. Links in the bio. All right. Well, thank, you, thank you so much. You guys, yeah, you guys take you, care and uh, uh, I, I can't wait to see what else the band has in store uh, in the future. Yeah, we'll be working on some new stuff. And we'll, we got a new record out, Get Loud. 
So everybody check that record out because I don't know if everybody even knows. I got we it. Haven't had a chance. We haven't <laughs> had a chance to talk for it. So uh, let everybody else know that, you know, we basically, we have a new record and uh, we just put out a few new videos and, um, you know, check check it out, man, you know. Um, I don't care. Right fucking on. steal it. Okay. Steal it. Just come to the show. <laughs> we don't make any money right off on. our music anyway. Yeah, last I saw you was in Vegas here during the punk rock bowling deal, so. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Much respect to you, and uh, you guys keep cranking out that great music, and I'll keep listening. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you very right, much. You guys, take you guys care, take guys. Care. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Care, thank you, guys. <laughs>